messing up everything. It's been Agatha all along. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're ranking every live action Marvel TV show. You're gonna try and keep me here against my will? I hear will. what you're saying, Danny, but. And no one loves this city more than I do, but you can't leave this room. For this list, we're looking at every series this company produced between 2013 and 2021, and determining the worst and the best of the bunch. So, sorry fans of the 1970s Spider-Man, but we won't be including him on this list. We'll also be leaving out animated series because they could make a list of their own. Since we'll be getting into some specific details about these shows, beware of spoilers ahead. Which of these series is your favorite? Be sure to sound off in the comments below. Number 18, Inhumans. Sooner or later, the humans are going to find us up here. And when they do, because they are humans, their first course of action will be to try to destroy us. This series follows a group of beings known as Inhumans who secretly live on the moon and tend to have special powers. After a few notable Inhumans debuted on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., fans were eager to meet a royal family of these enhanced humans on a new show. Unfortunately, that excitement was utterly wasted. This series was criticized for its dull storyline, unsympathetic characters, and questionable CGI. It also featured truly awful dialogue. Like, if you feel like, I don't know, uh, doing a handstand, you do it! <laughs> You're different than I expected. Even releasing the first two episodes on IMAX screens for a limited run didn't help matters. It was a huge bomb at the box office and across living room screens that Marvel would probably prefer you forgot about. We have to get out of here. We have to get to Black. We will. And now it's all over. Number 17, Hellstrom. A Marvel horror series based on comic characters that are children of the devil sounded incredible. Your father will be... <laughs> home soon. What are you talking about? If he sees us outside, he will be very angry. But the Hellstrom show was all style and no substance. The series followed half-demon siblings Damon and Anna Hellstrom as they hunted demons that possessed innocence. While the visuals were impressive, the show was held back by uninteresting family drama and flat characters. And yet here I am, responding in the flesh. Seriously, how bad is she? Bad. It came off as a cheap knockoff of Supernatural that took itself way too seriously. Since it was released right before Disney Plus offered a slew of new Marvel content that was tied into the MCU, there wasn't much reason for viewers to tune in. The series was quickly cancelled just two months after it debuted. And I got tossed across the room for my troubles. Happy? No. I'm not. Number 16, Iron Fist. Let's go, you don't okay. belong here. I'm Danny Rand. Now, come on guys, just call Harold. You're out of here. After the first three Netflix Marvel shows had strong debuts, hype was high for Iron Fist's first season. The show was all about a man named Danny Rand, who was trained by monks to become a martial arts master. But his training couldn't prevent many of his fight scenes from looking lackluster. Outside of disappointing choreography, Danny's tendency to whine made it hard to root for him. When combined with monotonous boardroom meetings and insufferable supporting characters, the show was a slog to watch. I was 10 when we crashed. I never had fingerprints taken. Then you've got nothing. Oh, man. The second season fared better thanks to a more engaging story and smaller episode count. And Jessica Hennick's Colleen Wing was always a highlight. However, its smart updates weren't enough to make the show beloved in the long run. I have my faults, and I'm learning to wear my mistakes, but you brought this on yourself. Number 15, The Gifted. Look, I'm Marcos, this is Lorna. Now trust me, we have all been where you are, or worse. We can help. Before Disney bought Fox, they produced a show about mutants. The Gifted made the bold choice to set its story in a world where the main X-Men team disappeared. So, when Caitlin and Reed Strucker discover their children are mutants, they have to turn to an underground mutant organization. While some of their familial drama works really well throughout the series, they weren't always the most interesting part of the show. But The Gifted did introduce a few great characters. I'm a telepath. I can sense thoughts if I'm close enough, and I've been getting some very weird thoughts from one of the others. The big guy there? Mutants like Blink, Thunderbird, and Polaris all had interesting stories and motivations. They also took part in some stunning action scenes. Although The Gifted wasn't a perfect mutant story, it was still a fun ride while it lasted. My name is Reed Strucker. My family needs help getting across the border. 
You and the people you work with, you do that, right? Maybe. You're about the mutant incident? Number 14, The Defenders. What are you doing? Gunshot. Where? In the penthouse. How do you know that? I just do. This is exactly what's trying to avoid. I need that. While this show was certainly a step up from Iron Fist, the Netflix hero team-up still fell short of expectations. Since the show only had eight episodes, it tended to rush through events and didn't always give its heroes equal time to shine. And the big bads weren't as threatening as they were built up to be. However, it was still a delight seeing these heroes interact with each other. Pairings like Daredevil and Jessica Jones or Luke Cage and Danny Rand were both incredibly enjoyable to watch. How come he can't be hurt? What's the deal with that fist? I earned it. You what? And seeing them all fight as a team still made us cheer as they vanquished their foes. Although the series was uneven, we're still a little bummed that all the Defenders didn't get another chance to unite. Jessica? Luke. How you been? Long story. We have to get out of here. Who's he? Number 13, Cloak and Dagger. So what happens now? What happens is you two are gonna come at the problem and fix it, somehow. One of Marvel's most dynamic duos got to step in the live action spotlight when Cloak and Dagger premiered. After two teens gained powers in the wake of an oil rig collapse, they went on to have vastly different upbringings. Their contrasting backgrounds and powers made them feel like they were two sides of the same coin. The interesting relationship between the duo was navigated well by actors Aubrey Joseph and Olivia Holt. While some aspects of the plot could feel a bit melodramatic, there was still plenty to like. The show handled topical issues like prejudice extraordinarily well. Look, you took an oath, and right now you have two lives in your hands. Understand that power. And their unique powers gave us visually stunning action scenes. Cloak and Dagger was ultimately a well-shot show with a great superhero duo and strong messages. I didn't know you knew how to care. I'm learning. Number 12, The Punisher. You got a pass, Mr. Castle. Yes. The country owes you a debt it can never repay. And for that, I am sorry. Following his incredible guest appearance on Daredevil, John Bernthal was given a shot at his own show. It was packed with the brutal violence the character has always been known for. Outside of the R-rated action, the show explored Frank's fractured mental state. It also tackled issues veterans face every day. First time as long as I can remember, I don't have a war to fight. And I guess, if I'm gonna be honest, I just... I'm scared. While not everyone in the supporting cast was as engaging as Frank, villains like the traitorous Billy Russo kept us glued to the screen. And the show wasn't afraid to shake up the dynamic by giving the Punisher a surrogate daughter in the second season. Although Frank consistently delivered violent justice throughout the series, the show still gave its complex themes and anti-hero plenty of room to grow. Sometimes you find things and uh, they change your life. Number 11, Runaways. Oh, there's not much to choose from. It's not too late to change our minds. Yeah, it is. After discovering their wealthy parents are sacrificing teens to a powerful alien, six kids rebel and go on the run. Each of them has a superpower, gadget, or unique talent. This group of special individuals grow closer together as they fight to survive and stop their parents' evil plans. Each of the young heroes fits into their role nicely. Not only is it fun to see them combine their abilities, it's also great to see them mature as the series goes on. What you guys did for me was pretty epic too. You should have run. Some of us wanted to. Since the Runaways were up against some truly terrifying villains, they needed every advantage they could get. Watching the heroes persevere through every struggle thanks to a little teen attitude may inspire you to fight the man. Time to come home, son. I'm not going anywhere with you. We're a family. We're a family. And we'll fight you if we have to. Number 10, Legion. Once upon a time, there was a little boy. A very special little boy. He had a gift. And a curse. Legion was another show about mutants that benefited from a terrific lead performance by the underrated Dan Stevens. 
This show chronicles the troubled life of David Haller, an immensely powerful psychic diagnosed with schizophrenia. You see it now, don't you? Where? A delusion starts like any other idea. Stop. He becomes entangled in a conflict between a group of mutants and a shady government agency. Stevens absolutely crushed the role in a show full of consistently jaw-dropping and impressive visuals. And due to Holler's unique mind and varied powers, Legion got creative about how he perceived the world in different episodes. The series also let comic talents like Jermaine Clement and Aubrey Plaza play fantastic villains. All the risks Legion took resulted in a Marvel show that looked and felt like no other. You know what? I'm done. You had your chance, Steve. No. Number 9. Agent Carter How could you ever say Howard Stark wants you to steal Captain America's blood? Oh, yes, look, it is possible. Haley Atwell was one of the strongest elements of the first Avenger. Fortunately, the MCU got to bring her back in a standalone series. The series showed us how Peggy handled dangerous missions while living in a world where she didn't always get respect. Whether she was triumphing over a big bad or sexism, we were all rooting for Peggy in each and every scene. These men you call your colleagues, they don't respect you. They don't even see you. Do you honestly expect they'll change their minds? I expect I will make them. Atwell's great performance was supported by standout characters like Howard Stark and his hilarious butler Edwin Jarvis. Despite critical praise, the series was cancelled after two seasons due to low viewership. But if you haven't seen the show, the series is an awesome way to get more insight into the great Peggy Carter's life. You go! What would Cap say if I want the best girl behind? He would say, do as Peggy says. Number 8. Luke Cage Really, guys? Hey, you gotta know we tried, man. Bulletproof hero Luke Cage starred in a show that highlighted one of Marvel's most prominent black heroes. Set in New York City's Harlem, the series captured the neighborhood's distinct culture while also tackling social issues and the occasional supervillain. Mike Coulter quickly proved he was the right man to fix Harlem. That's the risk that we take. No, she takes that risk. I take that risk. That's our job, not yours. You're not invincible. He gave a nuanced performance that showcased Luke's struggle to step out of the shadows and be the hero everyone needed. While the show didn't always handle its villains well, it did always shine when it focused on rising heroes like Misty Knight. And the series also cultivated an incredible soundtrack full of notable African-American singers to underscore its scenes. Luke Cage was truly a love letter to both the character and black culture. I'm Luke Cage. You can't burn me, you can't blast me, and you definitely can't break me. You want to test me? Step up. I'm right here. Number 7. Jessica Jones They say everyone's born a hero. But if you let it, life will push you over the line until you're the villain. Heroine Jessica Jones seemed to live in a sinister place full of deceitful people. Although she isn't always enthusiastic about solving crimes, there's no other sleuth we'd want on the case. An accident led to Jessica getting superpowers. Unfortunately, the tragic experiences she had while being mind-controlled by the sadistic Kilgrave left her with deep emotional scars. Seeing Jessica struggle to process her past while saving lives made her into a truly engaging protagonist. The series was at its best when she faced David Tennant's villainous Kilgrave. Oh no, are you upset with me for not dying? Did I foil your evil plan? Evil? Come on, a reductive. While no one quite matched his heights, a few surprising antagonists along the way kept things interesting. All of Jessica's ups and downs played out in a noir setting we would love to revisit again. Maybe it's enough that the world thinks I'm a hero. Maybe if I work long and hard, maybe I can fool myself. Number 6. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And guess what, Coulson? That's it! That's everybody! No, that's not it! There's an idea, a symbol, that must continue no matter what. A S.H.I.E.L.D. The first official MCU show followed Agent Phil Coulson and his team of specialists dealing with supernatural and extraterrestrial threats. While the show got off to an uneven start because it was too focused on incorporating events from the movies, it eventually found its own identity. As the series progressed, the group's dynamic grew incredibly strong, and we came to adore every team member. I have a potential fix, but I don't know how to do it without one of us possibly 
sacrificing ourselves. Ming-Na Wen's May and Chloe Bennett's Daisy were only a couple of the show's great characters. They appeared in a wide range of storylines that covered everything from ghost rider confrontations to world-ending disasters. After watching the thrilling adventures of these agents, you might want to sign up to join S.H.I.E.L.D. too. You said it yourself, Coulson. It matters who you are. No, I'm not trying to be a hero. I'm just here to see that S.H.I.E.L.D. continues. Number 5. Hawkeye. Now the suit. She put it on by accident. She didn't know what it means. She's not Ronan. Look at her, she's nine. And spoiled rotten. Shortly after Kate Bishop puts on the Ronin suit, New York City's tracksuit mafia comes after her. Clint Barton is forced to team up with her and confront the fact that he used to wear the outfit. Although the series has lower stakes than most MCU projects, the action scenes are incredibly strong. The show also gives Jeremy Renner a chance to dive into Hawkeye's emotional journey. You were a hero. I was a weapon. I was aimed by the right people, the right targets, so... You made mistakes, but those are behind you. No, it's tied to me. And whether Haley Steinfeld's Kate is showing off her archer expertise or getting on Clint's last nerve, she is very entertaining to watch. This tale of two archers makes the best of its grounded feel to give us accurate and complex portrayals of a rising heroine and a weathered hero. To really help people, we really try to help people anyway. Comes a lot of sacrifices, and some things you'll lose forever. Number 4. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier After the events of Endgame, Cap chose Sam to take up the shield. But the events of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier made it clear that carrying the mantle wasn't going to be simple. Layered antagonists like John Walker and Carly Morgenthau gave Sam physical and philosophical challenges to overcome. Stay down! No. While the show's action was as big and satisfying as any MCU film, the series was at its strongest when dealing with topical issues. The idea of what it means for a black man to be Captain America was explored from many angles. Pledge allegiance to that, my brother. They will never let a black man be Captain America. At the same time, we saw the former Winter Soldier grapple with PTSD and forgiveness. Fortunately, Captain America and Bucky rose above their challenges in a fantastic series. That's the Black Falcon there! Now, that's Captain America. Number 3. Loki When Loki escaped his grim destiny in Endgame, Time Police known as the TVA arrested him for not following his predetermined path. The trickster god then makes a deal with the organization to track an alternate version of himself in the hopes he can stay alive. The absurd TVA workplace was always fun to play around in. But since Tom Hiddleston's Loki has chemistry with pretty much all of the cast, we didn't mind when he stepped out. Thank you, my friend. You're my favorite. Over the course of the series, his interactions with people trying to defy fate made him grow as a person. And the way the show's events altered the course of the MCU made it a must-watch for fans. Loki's adventures got off to a spectacular start here. These are my friends. Uh, well, are they, um... How best to put this? Uh, us as a child, us in the future, and us as uh, uh, an alligator. Number two, WandaVision. Like you never see. WandaVision. WandaVision is one of the most unique Disney Plus series so far. The show gets props for building a plot where characters paid tributes to light sitcoms while setting up dark mysteries. And while the show came out weekly, fans spent lots of time sharing their unique theories about every little detail. But none of the mystery or sitcom antics would have worked without Elizabeth Olsen's Emmy-nominated work as Wanda. Thanks for the lesson. But I don't need you to tell me who. Her fight to protect Paul Bettany's tremendous vision and her children while keeping herself together was incredibly compelling. During Wanda's journey, the writers introduced new fan favorites like Monica Rambeau and, of course, Agatha Harkness. We cannot wait to see them all enchant us again thanks to this spellbinding show. We have said goodbye before, so it stands to reason. We'll say hello again. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Daredevil. He was a good man. And he's gone. Because I haven't stopped what's happening to this city. Netflix's first Marvel series revolved around a lawyer named Matt Murdock, whose eyesight was seriously affected in an accident. Since this incident improved his other senses, he decided to use his enhanced abilities to fight crime as Daredevil. Due to Matt's strong moral compass, he struggled with his guilt while punching goons in morally gray situations. Fortunately for us, Daredevil still fought bad guys in jaw-dropping fight sequences. The only part of the show better than the gritty confrontations was Vincent D'Onofrio's iconic performance as the villain Kingpin. Then I'm not the priest or the Levite. That I am the ill intent who set upon the traveler on a road that he should not have been on. Sparks flew every time he confronted Daredevil. Although we're not sure how writers combined this rivalry, legal drama, and fight scenes into one great show, we're certainly glad they did. This is my city. My family. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.